Hi, I'm Jenny back here with Misha, Rachel, and we are here in Cue the Lights, and we're going to talk about my school, Solberry School, in New Hope, Pennsylvania. So it is a fabulous and beautiful school. We went there to watch Jenny in Rent, in Rent her school yes. musical. It was fantabulous, if I may say so myself. I, I, we both watched it together. <laughs> she was great. You were great. It was amazing. So, all right. So, our first question of the segment is: What grade levels? From what grade to what grade is the school? It's from seventh to twelfth grade. And is it all girls, all boys, or is it both? It's both, all boys. Got and it. Girls, yeah. Isn't it sort of a boarding school? Yeah, they have boarding there, um, and they also have day students there. So it's both. It's really nice because a lot of the kids just mingle just like a regular school. And I really like the lunchroom, how they just make it like you're actually at home instead of just Oof. you're at a school. Like they have like fancy lunches and all that. It's really nice. And I really like how they incorporate that in like the day-to-day -day life. And, oh, Misha. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sounds nice. Maybe I'll try and go there myself. Okay, come that would, yeah, that would be so cool. You said it was, um, well, I'm already in seventh grade, so I guess I could try and do eighth grade. Maybe that would be so much fun. Yeah. If we went to the same school. Okay. They incorporate every single grade. You can all mingle, so I'll be seeing you a lot because, mm. yeah. Huh. We went off in our little fantasy. <laughs> so, you're a day student, right? Right. So, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the the cafeteria, whatever you guys like to call it. Um, it intrigued me. Okay. Well, what we usually do is we have we go in, and they also have a, vi a variety of foods, but they always send you an email on your phone of like what like dinner they're gonna have and what lunch, what breakfast, and then really yeah, and the really good thing is like on if you <laughs> if you wake up like at six o'clock or seven o'clock, they have breakfast for you. There, there's always a variety of bagels, cereal, there's eggs that they make, there's bacon, there's like potatoes, there's everything that you can imagine. It's really nice and I love it. And plus, when you have the free periods during M&M, when I'm free, I go in the cafeteria and I just eat cake. They have tons of cake and cupcakes and the, and the chefs like to bake desserts for us. And it's really nice and there's a lot of like, like fruit. There's many, they, they always make sure to have fruit there and lemonade. So you always have them. So um, about how big of a school is it? Like how many students or how many staff members do you think? Like I was going to ask you if you like personally know like the chefs and the bakers there because you guys are like a pretty close knit family, right? Um, I don't personally know them, but I've talked to them a lot and they're really nice. Um, awesome. I'm not sure how many students, but there is many because there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of seventh graders, like, there's a lot of eighth graders, like, you will see tons of kids from the lower grade and then to the upper grade, and they just mix in, and it's just a really, it's a small school, but it's big at the same time. Do so. you also, also, like, in high school, you make classes with the huh. other people, the other grades, yeah. and, but it, you, they also mix with the eighth and Seven. Yeah, they all mingle together. Um, like you can see them all the time, like running around. And yeah, it's really nice. So, can you tell us about the segment that's coming up? The segment, yes. Um, I'm gonna be interviewing a lot of um, Scott, which is the head of administrators, and Tom, who is the head of the school. They're really nice, they're amazing. And um, a couple students that um, have like in theater or in any production, and the theater, I'm gonna go to the theater, it's a really good theater. Like Sean, the director of the program, she's just amazing and she really like talks to the students. She's just, she's done this in be before, like, she's professional with this and she they make really good productions there. And it's a lot of like work because you have to be there every day till like seven o'clock or eight, but it's really, at the end, it's a great production. So I love theater there. Um, yeah, I'm into interviewing theater kids and a couple just like kids that do like different um, Spanish or, you know, Chinese or those kids and learning center kids too. So there's a lot of kids that we're going to be interviewing. So how well do you know the teachers and like the administrators at your school? Well, actually going back to the question about the lunch, 
what as I said, like this is like a home with all the borders, and they always mingle together. So the teachers, it's not like a school. You, they call you by the first name, like, and you call them by the first name. Like you, I came from the old school, and like, oh my god, I'm calling my teachers by the first name, and it's like a mom and dad relationship. It's like it's like a home relationship, and it's so nice. And I'm really close with a lot of my teachers because I get to skip to call them by the full name, the first name. It's really nice to have that ability to just be really close with like teachers and act like they're like parents to you. So, so talking a little bit more about the boarders, I know you don't board, but can you tell us a little bit about the boarding process? Like, how many days per week do the boarders stay? Do they go home on the weekends or? Um, they can go home on the weekends if they want. Usually they try to make you stay at school for just a long period of time just to get to know the school. And you don't, a lot of the boarders there, they don't like to go home that much. Um, it's literally like home because they do like grocery runs. They have their own groceries. They just go to the Chinese people. So they also go to like Chinese stores and Chinese shops and clothing stores. And they do all these things on the weekends. So the boarders don't really go home um, that much. But when they do, they're able to on spring break go to anywhere they want and just come back. And it's really nice to have that ability but yeah so when you say that they go like on grocery runs yeah um does someone drive them there or i mean if you're in high school you can most likely drive after a certain period of time yeah a lot of the kids they do drive themselves but there is um teachers driving those like buses and all that like vans to drive them to different places and there's a lot of other stuff to do there's like you can go to new york city to a play there's like go to an ice cream shop there's just like many trips there <laughs> like like nothing. Do you, do you like have roommates? Yeah, um, they, there's two roommates in each, so if everyone has a person, a companion, and then in the room, so it's really nice. Hi, I'm Jenny here from Q Lights at the Solberry School in New Hope, PA, and I'm here talking to Tom Wilshoots, the head of the school, and I'm going to ask him a few questions. So, what is the mission and main focus of the Solberry School? So, I think you could capture our main focus. Um, with one word, and that would be preparation. Uh, preparation for college, preparation for adulthood, preparation for life. Uh, we of course are a college prep school, but we define our mission much broader than that. We are really thinking about how to help students become productive, active, engaged, um, happy adults for the rest of their life. Okay. So what is your background, and why did you want to become the head of the school? So my background, um, I was in graduate school at Michigan State University working on a PhD in modern British history and needed to leave that uh, because I needed a full-time job because I had three young children. Um, started working in admissions, um, became much more interested in working in admissions and providing access to college uh, than I did teaching history. So I stayed in admissions for a number of years at Michigan State and then at Kent State in Ohio, back at Michigan State, um, and then I literally fell into a job at uh, an independent girls' school in Shaker Heights, Ohio, Laurel School. I was there for about 15 years doing admissions and then becoming the assistant head. I was the assistant head for three years um, and had reached a point where I thought it would be interesting to be a head of school. So I was in a job search and I was very fortunate to um, become the head of Solbury School. That's nice. So um, what do you think are the strengths of the Solbury School? So I think it begins with um, something I said earlier. We are a college prep school. I think we do a very good job of preparing young men and women um, for college. Um, but I really think the strength of Solbury School and what makes us distinctive is the environment we've created. We have created a place where young men and women can be who they are they can be their authentic selves, uh, they can be accepted for who they are, and that's a pretty magical environment to come of age and reach adulthood, being someplace where you don't have to put on a mask, where you can be who you are and get on about the, the joy of learning and education. Well, thank you, Tom Wilshoots, and we'll be back with more from the Slippery School. Hi, we're back again with Scott, and um, he is the head, head of admissions. And so tell me a little bit about yourself. 
Uh, so I've taught at Solberry for 23 years. I've, uh, most of my life here was as a history and English teacher. About eight years ago, I switched into admissions. Um, but it's been a great place to work and grow, and um, you know, it's been a great life. I love it. So tell me about the student body. So we have about 230 students in the school. There's a small uh, middle school of 7th and 8th graders. Those are all day students. The 9th through 12th grade has uh, about 215 kids in it, and those are both day and boarding kids. Uh, from the local area, as well as from a variety of states in the U.S., and from a variety of countries. So how do you choose students to be in the school in the So we're really looking for students who uh, are, would be interesting to teach. I mean, again, I think of myself first and foremost as a teacher, so I want students who I would love to work with in the classroom, who are engaged and insightful and curious. Um, that's really fun for me. So we certainly look for that. We have a variety of students here. We have students who take, you know, three, four AP classes each semester, uh, and we also have kids who might need a little support in terms of they have a language-based learning difference, or they just need some help with executive functioning or organizational uh, structures. And so we have support programs in place to help those. There's tons of support available for all students, no matter what kind of classes they're taking or what their abilities. Part of the principle of the school is that the teachers and students should be engaging a lot in and out of class, that we should be available to them and ready to provide help for them with whatever they need. Uh, then we also look for kids who are going to contribute in some way around campus. You know, you're a wonderful actress, so that was something that was attractive about you coming to Solberry, or whether you're going to con uh, contribute there, or on an athletic field, or in the chorus, or in a band, or something like that. And then, above all else, in some ways, is we want good people. Uh, we have a certain value system here, and a certain way we like to treat people and engage each other, and we want people who are going to perpetuate that. So what led you to become the head of um, missions? They asked. Um, it was not something I saw myself doing, and I think uh, one of the things that makes the school kind of unique is that it does for both young people and adults, that it, it senses when there's talent or maybe an ability to do something, and it encourages you and nudges you and gives you the opening to sort of explore those kind of interests and maybe find something in yourself that you didn't know was there. And so that's what happened to me. I, I was not looking to be in admissions. Uh, they sort of encouraged me to give it a shot and I, I fell in love with it. So why is this school better than any other school? Well, I don't know that I would say that. It's the right school for me and I think it's the right school for lots of kids. And so for me as the director of admissions in some ways, it's all about finding the right fit. So there are certainly things I love about Solberry School. I've been here a long time. I plan on being here for a long time going forward. Um, so if you're a student who uh, likes to ask questions and enjoys that and who wants to be uh, part of a community where you can be appreciated and where your thoughts and opinions matter, um, where you can have a voice in class and where you can have the opportunities to engage in a variety of activities um, then, then this could be a great place for you. Does it make it better for everybody? Not necessarily, but does it make it absolutely the right place for some people, both young and old? Absolutely. Hi, we are back, and I am at the Founders Library here to interview some students. And so what has been your favorite class that I've ever taken after this? Um, my favorite class has been ethics because I feel like um, I've had the opportunity in the class to um, well, the teacher has made me, the three teachers that I've had um, have made me think about um, uh, the world and my values and my morals very differently. Um, I learned about many different people's uh, values and um, the way they think, and I, like, I liked that I was able to learn about different people's way, the ways they think, and the teachers really made me comfortable when I was in my class. Um, so the campus is very unique here, and it's like a mini college, so like, what do you like best about it? Um, I like that we're able to walk around outside, um, especially in the spring when it's hot. I like walking outside, um, and in the winter it's, it's cold, but I especially like it in the spring and the fall when it's warm outside and we're able to walk around from class to class, from building to building. Um, so do you think this um, school prepares you for your next steps in college? Yes, um, I feel like especially like in math, um, English, I've had uh, really good teachers. In my math class, I've been able to um, attend honors classes, which has really helped me in um, preparing college. 
um, the teachers have um, ingrained in my brain the uh, different things that they've taught me, and I remember um, remember the things that they've taught me since this till this year, which I've been here for three years. So I remember things from freshman year. So that's what I like about them. Okay, what about you? Um, I feel that Solbury definitely prepares me for college, and um, speaking as a senior, I feel like I've definitely learned all I need to know about preparing for my next steps and um, the classes are definitely very um, engaging and uh, inspirational for future careers. Um, I felt that my teachers are always there to help, are always there to provide moral support as well as academic support. Um, and speaking of the campus as a whole, I definitely feel that this is a very um, college preparatory environment, not only in the classroom, but outside as well. Well, thank you so much, and we'll be back. Hi, we're back at the Cozy Swim Solberry School, and I'm here with the drama teacher, Sean Ray, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. So, when, when did you first find your passion for acting, and why did you want to teach here? Uh, it's actually kind of a funny story. I didn't really discover theater until 10th grade. I had always been in choir. I always did um, sketches for camp and was a, a big giant ham, as you can imagine. But um, I was in, my choir director asked me to audition for Fiddler on the Roof when I was in 10th grade. And I, I the, then I was just hooked. The second I stepped on that stage, that was it for me. Like in an instant, I played a million different sports and I was into all different things. And then that was where the trajectory took off. <laughs> oh, and why do I teach here? Um, I was teaching at a big public school locally, close by, and I loved that job. It was great, but they don't have, there was nowhere near the support for the arts that they have here, which is understandable. They have a lot of big budget issues. But when I came here and um, it was expressed to me how they were going to handle the arts and what would I be allowed to teach and the different programs we had here, I fell in love instantly and couldn't wait to work here. <laughs> so that's why I came here. So how do you think your teaching, your teaching methods help the um, drama kids here and the theater kids? I think, well, you can speak to this too because you've yeah. taken my classes, but <laughs> I think I like to make sure, my, my biggest priority is you can't really learn anything unless you are comfortable and you're having a good time and you feel you're never made to feel foolish or not good enough. I think it's really important that you feel um, like you are there for the big picture and for yourself so it doesn't turn into all this pressure on yourself. So I think my particular method of trying to approach it with a, no matter what your talents are, because that's very subjective, um, you should be able to learn and have fun within this environment because I really think theater benefits everybody. So how many kids have pursued this professional? I've been doing this for about 20 years, and at my last school, of course, there were hundreds of kids involved in the program, so it was a little different scale, of course, but a good percentage, there's probably, I know of about 15 or 20 from that school that have pursued it professionally, and even though we're a smaller school here, in my five years here, probably eight to 10 kids are pursuing it professionally and making a living, so that's really fun. Good. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sean. You're so welcome. And we'll so back. glad. We'll be back soon. Thanks. Hi, I'm here with Dan, the science teacher, and I'm going to ask him a few questions. So STEM seems to be a pretty hot topic, so tell me about it. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, there has been a recent kind of explosion in interest in applying the stuff we learn in the classroom to all the fun technology and products that are out there in the real world. So they've realized that it's not just your math class and just your science class but really trying to put it all together. So science, technology, engineering, and math, all those letters put together makes that acronym, which is called STEM. And a lot of people are still trying to learn how to best introduce that in the school. But we know that there's all these new toys. There's robotics, there's computer programs that are a lot easier to use than they ever have been before. And there are uh, concepts that you can have students from middle school through high school already exploring even before you start to apply the math equations to them that allow you to build and make really neat things 
And that, I think, has been the power of it. So the fact that we have computers in every classroom, and here at Solberry, we can wheel in a whole classroom's worth of computers. We have access to all our fancy science lab equipment. Um, now, we can actually do math modeling. So we can actually do a chemical reaction and take use of some of the old periodic table chemistry fundamentals. And we can start talking about how you make uh, something like uh, a plastic and how you put it together to make an object. And then you can combine that with your physics principles. And of course, we do physics in the ninth grade here at Solbury so that we can take the concepts of force and how things can withstand force and not fall apart. And then we can apply that to our chemistry class, our biology class, and our later classes. And you can use that to think about things that you've already done in your school, like physics and forces and how they apply with materials that come from chemicals and chemistry to make bridges and structures and 3D printing and how you can make little objects just by um, putting the right material in the right shape. So the resources that are available to school students today and the capability to combine it with the science book knowledge that we already kind of are good at kind of thinking about and teaching and doing homework problems. Um, how you put that all together is how you kind of can grow people that not just can do equations and solve problems, but can actually apply concepts to making the stuff that the world doesn't have yet. So the next iPad will be made by someone who really understood how you can use the basic technology and apply it to solve a problem that is still out there in a world that didn't exist, like how can we read emails from our telephone? So like 20 years ago, that wasn't a question people had. And people with real strong understanding of science and math and technology were able to say, hey, we can actually do that now and then apply that. So it's fun to think about. And I think uh, in a school like Solberry, we really like to, to try to actively engage the students and try to teach the basics and teach the applications and that is why I think uh, well one that's the the power of STEM the concept and two that's actually the cool thing about how high schools and middle schools all over the place are really trying to take hold and figure out the best way to bring it all together so that hopefully you as the student can be interested in it and learn stuff right so the, and learning stuff and making stuff is uh, the goal at the end of the day. Hi, we are back at the campus of Solberry School. And so how many languages do you take and which one did you pick? Um, I take one language, I take Spanish. And at Solberry there's uh, three languages offered here. Um, there's Spanish, French, and Mandarin. And I chose Spanish because I encounter a lot of uh, people in my life that speak Spanish. And I want to be able to learn Spanish um, to speak that and understand that and use it in my daily life. So, um, why did you want to attend the Solberry School? Well, um, there's a lot of different reasons I want to I wanted to attend Solberry School. Um, but when I first came to Solberry to tour, I just like fell in love with the school. I mean, how could I not? But um, I just saw how welcoming this community um, was and how strong it was and how diverse this, uh, the student body was, and that really stood out to me. Um, I also really enjoyed the student and teacher relationship and how um, amazing and unique that is. Um, I loved a lot of different things, but I think the most important was, is, was uh, when I came home after that day, um, I was smiling like I have never done before about school. And I think that's really important because if you're not like loving school, then I, I, I just think that you really need to love school. And when I'm at Solberry School, I really love it. And I love school now because I go to Solberry. That's nice. So um, do you think the school prepares you for your next steps in college? Yeah, a lot. Um, Solberry School really helps each individual student become who they are and really creates a lot of critical thinking and um, it's really helped me become really independent and with the freedom they give you you really take those uh, free that, that freedom and really use it in ways that you're not able to in other schools. Well thank you Ben and we'll be back. 
Hi, we're back again with a student called Carol Wright, and she's a senior, and she actually has her own magazine. So tell us about the magazine. Okay, well, the magazine is an online magazine called Nyota, and Nyota means star in Swahili. And so over the summer, I kind of, I don't know, it was a really random thought, but I was like, I want to start a magazine. And my sister was so um, helpful, she just didn't hesitate in like saying, okay, I'll do it with you. So we decided to like partner together, and we were throwing around ideas because we were like, what type of magazine is this? Like, how can we make it unique? So we decided to split it up and into three sections, music, fashion, and culture. And so we try to find the like upcoming stars in those areas. And um, so yeah, it kind of just came out over the summer and then we're like, why not? And we started finding different people, emailing different people like who I saw on Instagram or YouTube who were popular. And it kind of just took off from there. So yeah. That's great. So what's your favorite class here at Silver? Favorite class? Hmm. Uh, that I've ever taken or like this year? That you've ever taken. Ever taken? I think I would say Amstead. Um, it's like honors English and AP history, and I really love English, and I love the English like of Amstead. And Sarah was so cool; she was such a good teacher. And like overall, it was just like a really good course. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, how hard was it to start an online magazine? Um, well, starting the magazine, I guess with the concept, I was like, oh, this will be easy. But when you when I first started actually having to find the people for the magazine and then figuring out how to make the layout, it got pretty difficult because first of all, like. Who do you contact? Who do you want in this magazine? That's like the biggest part. And actually having them email you back, like the hardest thing is having people email you back. And some people just, they're like, yeah, I'd love to. And then you send a follow up and they're like, no response. So that's probably the hardest part of it. And then the second hardest part was doing the layout because like my, it was just my sister and I, and like we didn't have a graphic designer. So my sister was like doing the graphics and I was trying to type up all these interviews. And it was kind of difficult. Um, so getting started was definitely rough, but we learned from it because like the first issue we were up to like, one in the morning, like fixing things before we put it out, and then we're like, okay, for the second one, we have to get so much more organized. So definitely difficult, but like worth it in the end. Like with how it came out, it's really good um, process and and learning how to make magazines, learning how to just get organized and meet people and things like that. It was good. Um. So how many people check your magazine, and like, are there any issues? Or like yeah, there are um, two issues out so far, and. Um, so for the stats they have on NIOTA, I can check them. I think it's like 3,000 plus have seen it so far. They have like impressions. And then the first one, I think about 200 something reads, and then the second one is like 300. So it's growing, which is exciting. Um, and we're definitely trying to get more people with like bigger followings because then more people will check it out, obviously. And we have a friend who just started doing the graphics for us for the second magazine, and it totally revamped the look, which made it more appealing for readers. Yeah. So that really helped us out. And uh, you can check it out at Issue, so it's www.issuu.com slash Nyota Magazine. Thank you yeah. so much. No problem.